very dear students and uh, my audience all over the world. This is Professor Dr. Zia Ahmed. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's lecture, I shall be trying to guide the researchers of MPhil, especially when they prepare for their viva or the oral examination, what kind of preparation they should be making. Although I know different universities have different processes, like uh, some universities ask the students to prepare slides, some would design some questions for them, and after that, they would ask the students to go through the thesis and present themselves before the examiner. But most of the time, I have seen out of my own experiences uh, that the student fails to fulfill the requirements of that viva, how that person should explain, and continue to waste their time in unusual and unwanted kind of things most of the time and fail to defend their thesis. So in this video, I shall be providing a little bit of guidelines, one can say, which possibly may not match with many other external examiners, but still it could be some way out for, for to, to, to help the students. So first of all, what the student is required to do that they must go through their thesis because that is their mental creation. They have created it. Uh, and therefore, it is required that they must know the facts and the things or the topics on their fingers that should be on their fingertips in order to describe whenever a question is put to them. For this purpose, the topic comes first of all. Simple reading of the topic in the slides is not necessary, is not required. Students are required to defend their topic. I mean, why they had taken up that topic? What was the rationale behind that and what idea prompted them to choose that topic and what is the significance of their topic of research and that idea possibly can be related and contrasted or compared with many other researches which is possibly the students or the scholars might have come across to explain their title. They must be able to talk about the variables which are in their topic. These variables must be defined also by them if the external examiner asks. And secondly, instead of rambling about this my delimitation, this is that, the student should immediately come to the research question. Because research question is the most important area which the uh, teacher would like to see. Because the research question is a guide, is a pilot, and it must be relevant to the topic. It must be uh, fulfilling the demands of the topic. It must be saying something which may justify why the topic is there. And secondly, it should also be helpful in guiding the researcher where this research should go. So it means that, the first of all, the research question should be very carefully designed, whether it's a qualitative research or it's a quantitative research or, or what's the design of the research. Accordingly, uh, the research question should be designed. And then in the viva or oral examination, the student is required to answer the research questions briefly at the very moment when he reads the questions and he should tell to the examiner that he has tried to find out the answer to this to this question by keeping in view certain facts and uh, ideas or theories. After the research question, the student should immediately proceed to theoretical framework. I mean, which theorist or which philosopher was employed in order to discuss, in order to analyze, in order to read the text or the collection of materials wherever they have come from. The, uh, the, the researcher or the scholar must know what was the theory, what were the main points of the theory, and who had given it, when that person had given it. Possibly, if it is possible for the scholar, he should compare and contrast this theory as well and locate that theorist and theory also in some context. Only then he can defend that this, this theory was quite well suited to the research which he has conducted. So three, four things. Number one, theorist. Number two, the book from where the philosophy comes. Number three, the main points of that theory. And yes, if you have used multiple theorists, then you must be able to let the examiner know the very points which you had adapted out of these all theories or theoretical points in order to suit to your research. After you have talked about the theoretical framework, you may be talking about the terminology which you possibly have explained in literature review and tell the examiner some of the terms and the definitions with examples, unless the examiner says that he doesn't need to uh, talk about these terms. 
If this is the case, then immediately proceed to the methodology section. At what method, what research design, whether the research is qualitative or quantitative, whether the research is in the field of linguistics or literature, or whatever the research is about, and what have been the steps taken in order to you know, continue the research and whatever the chapterization is going to be. That may be mentioned by the researcher in detail unless he stopped to do so. And after that, the researcher is required to come to data collection. He must point out to the sources of data, primary as well as secondary. And then he should also or she should also point out to the fact what was the way of collecting data? I mean, what was the method of collecting data? Was this interviews or it was questionnaire? It was observation? It was focus group or it was simply library reading, it was a library research and the, the, the things like historical archives and other data available in the books have been, you know, selected and read under certain lens and this lens should be the lens which comes out of the theory or theoretical framework which possibly the, the researcher has employed. And in that way, the collection of data must be talked about and one or two examples of the collection of data may be put forward to the external examiner. And after that, the student should provide a sample analysis of the data collected. Uh, for this purpose, a type of pilot study should have been done already. And out of the thesis, some pages may be copied by the scholar and uh, that scholar should talk to the examiner, let him know that this is the form of data, this is my lens, and I have analyzed this data according to the theory and according to the tools which were used and talked about in the beginning and the research question the topic and therefore the findings have been brought out because of the because of these uh, these three four items the topic the idea research question and the objective when the researcher has uh, shown the analysis to the examiner the examiner may be putting some of the questions uh, how the finding has come here how it has been related compared or contrast to some literary analysis or non-literary analysis already done and how this is relevant to the real life in which the, the research has been conducted. And after doing this, the researchers should proceed further to talk about the findings. In Viva, all findings cannot be talked about. Just a few major five to six findings may be told to the external examiner and if he puts a question about these findings, it is possible to uh, prove the, your point of view with the help of some of the examples from the thesis. And when findings have been talked about, the conclusion must be discussed. The conclusion has to be essentially the answer to the research questions which were posed in the beginning. The researcher must say that this was the first question, this was the second question, and it should be followed by the answer to the first question, answer to the second question, and the third question if it is there. After talking about the, the answers, the researcher should go further to amalgamate all these answers together in order to frame his conclusion that must be very briefly mentioned by the writer. The uh, researcher is also required to talk about the format and the style guide he has used. Most of the time our students in our universities are using these days APA, MLA or Chicago and dominantly this is APA which is being used. The researcher should talk about this style also and he should give examples out of that that in this way or that way he has used. These examples can come from in-text references, hung quotations, direct quotes or indirect quotes and ultimately the end references may be talked about in that regard. One page should be opened to talk about the APA format. I mean, what were the margins of the page and how the passages have been hyphenated uh, or, or uh, have been not hyphenated, but uh, uh, indented, the very proper word for that, the passages which APA style says should be indented. And then uh, in text and uh, uh, the references which are present there uh, in indirect references may be talked about by the researcher by giving example out of the thesis. So when the researcher has done all this, there is very little left about the thesis. Uh, maybe the significance of the thesis may be talked about, academic, social or political significance. And then some recommendations may also be in the mind of the researcher to be talked about. So, Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of preparation you can make in order to appear, at least this should be made in order to appear before an examiner uh, for the for passing the oral examination or Viva Voci that we call it, it as. 
Hopefully you have got something out of this video. You have understood something. If it is the case, then do not fail to hit the subscribe button as well as the like button. Hopefully I shall be seeing you in some next video. Till that time, keep happy, keep smiling and keep researching. Thank you.